Hello everybody and welcome back to another Tech Tree Overview and today we are going to look at the newly released German battleships. Now do keep in mind that there are likely to still be some changes that will happen the next little while so not everything is final. However, uh, I should be able to give you a pretty clear impression of uh, what some of these ships are going to be capable of. Do keep in mind that when I talk about ships, I will be talking about them in their fully upgraded forms and comparing them to the fully upgraded forms of other ships in their tier. Not only that, but if there is anything of note between the stock and the fully upgraded hulls, I will of course let you know. So let's get started. First up, tier 3 German battleship Nassau. This will most likely in the next little while become the best tier 3 battleship. In terms of her hit points, she's sort of midway between the South Carolina and the Kawachi. Armor protection, she has less than both of those ships, at only 270 millimeters for her Citadel. In terms of uh, torpedo protection, she has the same as the Kawachi, but less than the South Carolina. So, survivability-wise, she's sort of right in the mix there, with some things that are a little bit better, some things a little bit worse. So, in terms of survivability, she's okay. However, however, I do have to say this, even though her Citadel armor is less, if you angle the ship, you're really not going to have problems down to Tier 3 with the guns that Tier 3 battleships carry. So you should have no problems at all. What makes the Nassau special, however, are these main guns. They're not very big, 283 millimeters, and she's got six of them total, uh, although you can only get four of these turrets ever to one side to fire. So a maximum of 8 shells. She's got the Kawachi layout. So the advantage, of course, of the Kawachi layout is that you can pretty much aim in any direction and you will pretty much always have guns in that direction. Now the special thing about these guns uh, is that they fire really, really quickly. If you take a look at them, their reload speed is 22.2 seconds. Now comparatively speaking, if you look at the South Carolina and the Kawachi, they're going to reload a heck of a lot slower. So that means you're going to be able to get out a lot of shells very, very quickly, and it's, this is very, very useful at the lower tiers, where things like to get close, cruisers, destroyers. Having battleship guns that fire quickly is a huge, huge bonus. In terms of her dispersion, it looks like her dispersion isn't all that special, but I have found that when you're in battle, her guns behave quite well, and her dispersion tends to be quite manageable, and at times even quite good. Uh, her shell velocity, also pretty good, although range is a little bit lacking 10.1 kilometers, so you do have to be cautious of that. Still, uh, this ship has phenomenal firepower. Um, there is one thing, of course, to keep in mind, which is that the low-tier German battleships have pretty slow turrets. These ones turn in 51.4 seconds. However, like I mentioned earlier, having that Kawashi layout where you have guns pretty much at the other direction at all times is going to be quite useful as the turrets don't traverse very quickly at all. One other thing to keep in mind about the Nassau is that she can actually do this. You can take her in, bow in like this, and she quite comfortably can get off uh, four shells directly forward. So, and if you, if you have to wiggle a little bit, it's still not that hard to get off all six shells. And this allows her to stay very, very angled while bringing quite a good amount of firepower uh, onto the enemy. The other thing about the Nassau is that she has loads and loads of secondary guns. This ship has secondary guns everywhere. Yep, this ship even has secondary guns on the rear end. Yep, you can say that her rear end is quite well protected. So she does have loads of secondary guns, which is actually very useful if you ever get close to things, as the secondary guns are going to be able to output quite a bit of damage as well. Other things to take a look at, well, her AA, nothing really special. Tier 3 AA is definitely nothing to write home about. Her maximum speed of 20 knots is quite average. Turning circle radius, 510 meters, is okay. Rudder shift time, 11.2 seconds, that's all okay. And surface detectability, 10.4. That's all quite normal for a Tier 3 battleship. Still, I think that with her pretty good armor, not saying that she has best armor, but she has pretty good armor, if you angle that armor and you utilize her really, really good guns, this battleship should perform beautifully for you. And you should be able to get really good results out of her. And I wouldn't be surprised if she quickly becomes the best tier 3 battleship. 
So your very first encounter with a German battleship is a pretty positive one. And then you finish the Nassau and you're thinking, great, things are looking good, and you move up to the Kaiser. And a disappointment. The Kaiser is, well, she's very, very mediocre, if that's the best way to put it. Um, first things first about the Kaiser is that when you get the ship, the first priority is to upgrade from the stock hull to the upgraded B hull. And the reason you want to do that, the biggest reason you want to do that is because this B hull gives you better AP shells. And that's the biggest reason why you want to do the upgrade first. Sure, you get a few more AA guns and a bit more secondaries, but they're not really significant changes. The difference in AP shell, however, that changes a lot of things. So always go for that first. All right, once you've gotten the Kaiser fully upgraded, let's take a look at her. In terms of HP, she's got 46,400, which is the most HP out of any of the Tier 4 battleships. Yay, she does at least have something that she's, I guess, kind of good at. Her armor is okay. Uh, if you take a look at her armor, she has 265mm Citadel armor. It's okay. Her torpedo defense, 22%, puts her middle of the pack. So that's okay, too. Her guns... They're actually all right, 305mm um, guns, which is basically the same ones as the Wyoming and the Ishizuchi. So gun-wise, 305mm, that's okay. The thing, of course, is that these guns are very, very good in terms of reload time, 26 seconds. And that puts her uh, right behind the Ishizuchi in terms of rate of fire. Very, very good reload time. Her shell damage, both HE and AP, are okay, and her shell velocity is pretty darn good. However, there are two things about these guns that you have to keep in mind. One, 180 degree traverse uh, time is 60 seconds. The guns turn really, really slow. And if that's not sort of a bad enough problem, while on paper her dispersion looks okay, when I played her in game, her dispersion was sort of crappy. And that promoted that feeling like I'm going to get in there and I'm going to brawl with other ships, except your turrets take forever to turn. And so here's a German battleship where it felt like the thing that you wanted her to do, she wasn't really good at. The thing that, yeah, it was just one of those ships. So it's like you really, really want to brawl, but she just wouldn't let you. But if you try to play her to the non-brawling style, well, yeah, she just her dispersion wasn't very good, and she just seemed to have issues hurting stuff. And so I wasn't really all that fond of the Kaiser. The ship, however, is fast enough. I do have to say that. It means 23 knots, so that's faster than the Wyoming. Uh, it's a little bit slower than the Japanese uh, battle. They're actually more battle cruisers, but yeah, they're slower than the Japanese uh, battleships right now. Uh, faster than the Imperator Nikolai. In terms of her turning circle radius, 600 meters, she's relatively agile, and her rudder shift time isn't all that terrible. Her AA defense is also actually decent. I mean, while her short range AA isn't very good, her long range AA is actually the best out of all the tier 4 battleships. Now, well, one other thing before I sort of give final verdict on the Kaiser is that she does have this rather awkward turret placement as well and so what you tend to find with the Kaiser in game is that you really only ever get out a four turret broadside so only eight shells the other turret while it can fire across uh, the middle section it can fire across you pretty much have to go full broadside uh, before you can get all ten guns uh, on target and of course that also you know forces you to present a full broadside and the firing arc is kind of crap so all in all the Kaiser is just well she's underwhelming after coming from the NASA however not all is lost because starting at tier 5 the Germans have a good consecutive number of pretty darn good battleships so let's continue our tech tree overview and look at the Koenig all right, so tier five, the Koenig and the Germans probably looked at the Kaiser and went, eh, that turret placement didn't really work. So yay, all the guns are on the center line now. Now, once again, for the Koenig, really important thing to keep in mind is again, 
upgrade the stock hole to the next one right away. So go from the A to the B hole right away because you get better shells. All right, so once you fully upgraded it, now that's after you get the C hole and all the other upgrades, let's take a look at the ship. On paper, the Koenig doesn't actually look good at all. Yep, unlike the Kaiser, which actually had things on paper that look good, the Koenig on paper doesn't look good at all. Lowest HP, uh, worst torpedo defense, uh, you look at her armor, and her armor looks sort of not as good as the other tier 5 battleships. Uh, her Citadel armor, 200 millimeters, is actually less than that of the Congo, which are 203 millimeters. Never mind things like the Texas and the New York. So, you look at the ship and you're like, huh, so survivability-wise, she looks very average. What about her guns? Are her guns any better? Well... 305 millimeter guns, really, really small, because by now, the New York, the Texas, the Congo, they all have bigger guns. Hmm. Look at her damage, and 8,400 max damage. So AP, not that great, right? And then you take a look, and you go, well, is there anything about the ship that stands out? And you look at turret traverse, it's 60 seconds, not that good. You look at dispersion at 16 kilometers, 223 meters. On paper, that doesn't look that great either. Reload time, however, is good, 26 seconds, which is very, very fast. It's 4 seconds faster than the Congo, and 8.3 seconds faster than the Texas and the New York. So you kind of look at the ship and like, yeah, that's kind of disappointing. Hmm. But, but, there's a but here. When I took the Koenig into battle, after initially looking at her port stats and just going, wow, the ship is very, very disappointing, I took her into battle, and the first thing I noticed is, her guns behave. Her guns actually behave very, very well. I had no issues getting very, very pretty salvos consistently out of the Koenig. So that might be her thing. Well, on paper, she doesn't look all that great. Um, when you take her into battle, her guns perform quite well. And not only that, but her armor actually seems to do a pretty good job as well. Um, while well, she doesn't have the thickest set of armor, her armor definitely seemed to be able to protect her. As Especially when you got a little bit closer. I mean, that is the German battleship thing. You gotta generally get a bit closer. Still, turret traverse is a little bit annoying, as it is a little bit on the slow side. However, it was definitely playable because at least when you hit stuff, they actually hurt stuff. So, especially cruisers, mind you. Cruisers do not like things that can hit them hard and accurately. It's not fun. And also, also one more thing for 16 kilometer range is okay. One problem with the Koenig is there is no plane, so don't expect to get any more range out of her, unlike other ships that have scout planes. All right, um, one other thing is that, strangely enough, uh, again, with the German battleships, best long-range A again, although her closer-range A is kind of meh, but at least at long-range, you might be able to knock out a few planes here and there. Ship is also pretty good in terms of speed. 24 knots maximum speed puts her sort of in between the Congo and the New York. Her turning circle radius of 620 meters does make her a pretty agile ship. So all in all, all in all, even though on paper the Koenig looks disappointing, her in-game performance for me was very, very good. And so this is a tier 5 battleship that I'm not sure if it'll eclipse the Congo yet. That's a pretty hard thing to do. But she definitely, I think, will take her place as one of the more solid uh, Tier 5 battleships. Moving on from the Koenig, which is pretty good, maybe not best in class, we go into ships where the Germans can, I think, legitimately claim to be best in class. And first up is the Bayern. And the Bayern, well, this ship, I can quite comfortably say, is best Tier 6 battleship. All right, so... Uh, once again, don't forget, upgrade from the stock hull to the upgraded hull because, once again, it will give you better shells. So, important thing to do. Once you have the ship fully upgraded, how does she stack up against her competitors? Well, HP-wise, she's still got the lowest, 51,600. Her torpedo defense, 19%, also the worst. Uh-oh, it's kind of starting to sound a little bit like the Koenig again. Her armor on paper, again, doesn't look great. 260 millimeters on the Citadel. You take a look at the numbers and it's like, oh, she doesn't look all that great. However, however, her armor in game is absolutely troll as hell. I played the Bayern and 
I, I had no problems getting to brawling range with the tier 6, tier 7 battleships. Do be careful about the bow. Uh, 25 millimeters on the bow. You can still get overmatched by guns larger than 356 millimeters. However, most times I just found the ship incredibly tough. A very, very durable ship. Very, very hard to get killed by other ships while I'm playing this one. As long as I'm angled, of course. Her guns. And here's where the, the fun begins. Bayern has 380 millimeter guns, so especially when you run into New Mexico's and Arizona's and War Spites and ships like that. Well, War Spite maybe not so much, but uh, Fuso's, things like that. They are going to go bow into you, and when you go bow into them, they're going to bounce off of you without any problem whatsoever for the Bayern, but you are going to be able to overmatch their armor with your 380 millimeter guns. A unique advantage enjoyed by the War Spite up until this point. But the difference between the Byron and the Warspite is the Byron is a hell of a lot more tough, as I mentioned earlier. The Warspite, no matter how I seem to play that ship, she does feel fragile at times. The Byron, no such thing. This is one tough cookie. And that, plus the fact that her guns will start overmatching other Tier 6 battleships, and we are going to have a very, very good ship on our hands. In terms of her guns, if you take a look at them on paper, again, their stats don't seem super impressive. Reload time is a very standard 30 seconds. Turret traverse speed is a bit faster, 51.4. Dispersion at 17.7 kilometers is not so pretty looking 240 meters, but again, in game, the ship's guns seem to behave quite well. Max AP damage, 10,900, is second best right behind the War Spite. So Bayern, in terms of her guns, in terms of armor, very, very solid there. Then let's go on to the Bayern's AA, and well, her long range AA again is really darn good. Average damage at 4.5 kilometers is 100. This is the best out of any of the tier 6 battleships. So her AA is again interesting, her long range AA being quite good, her closer range AA being kind of meh, but once again, you should be able to swat down a couple of planes at longer range. Another reason why I really think the Byron will do well is that she is a pretty fast ship. Her max speed, 25 knots. She's now a speedy ship. Her turning circle radius of 630 meters is also really good. I mean, the Fuso, while it does go reasonably fast, has a pretty large turning circle radius. The Byron, no such thing. Really, really agile ship, really darn fast as well, at least for this tier. One issue that the Byron will have, though, is, again, like the Koenig, she has no access to any aircraft. But, considering her other traits, that's a small price to pay for how good the Byron is. Uh, now, a sort of a sideways comment, uh, is there a chance the Byron might get nerfed? Maybe? I don't know this for a fact, but, I mean, if she, if, if she goes into... Th the live server and people start to play her, I quickly expect her to become the best tier 6 battleship. And maybe some changes might happen to her. I'm not 100% sure there. Alright, so we go from a pretty good tier 5 to a really good, almost best in class tier 6. We move up to the Sharnhorst sister ship, the Geniza now. Now here is a ship that you look at and you might say, well, she doesn't look all that impressive because look, she only has 6 main guns and they're only 380 millimeters but i am i'm almost eh, I'm like 95 percent confident in arguing that the gunnison now is actually going to be one of the best tier 7 battleships in the game and you're probably looking at me going how is this possible well let's see first things first her hp 58,200 HP, she's sort of middle of the pack there in tier 7, between the Colorado and the Nagato when it comes to HP. Her armor though, she has 350 millimeters of Citadel armor, and that means the Gneisen out, while on paper she right now has 260 written there, it's not a correct number, they will fix that, it's just simply an error, I think, in the numbers they've put there. But she has the same armor as the Sharnhorst, and if anybody who's played the Sharnhorst knows, that armor is troll as hell, and you can bounce a lot of stuff. Her torpedo defense, 22%, isn't very good. In fact, it's the worst out of any of the Tier 7 battleships, but she has other traits that'll help her when it comes to dealing with torpedoes, and I'll get to that in a minute. So, let's take a look at her guns. 380mm guns only has six of them. Their firepower must be kind of crappy. Then you take a look at the guns and you go, 26 second reload time, okay, that's kind of fast. That's good. 
Oh, look, 36 second, 180 degree traverse time. Ooh, the turrets do traverse quite fast. And then you take a look and you go 258 meter dispersion, 19.5 kilometer max range. That's worse than the Nagato, which is like 231 meters at 20.5 kilometers. So the nice now, maybe the dispersion's kind of crappy. Well, on paper, it appears to be that way. But I took her into game, played with her. Used her guns, and I found her guns to be quite darn consistent. So, the nice now on paper, her guns don't look great, but when I was using them, they were very well behaved. They they had nice tight groupings, and they I really had no issues hitting people with these guns. And then you think about the fact that you have a fast reload, nice accurate hits, and these guns can put out quite a bit of pain. Then, of course, one other thing we've got to talk about is the nice now has quite a lot of secondary guns and she's basically got a couple of hermelins strapped to her side in fact she's got three of them strapped i think uh worth of secondary guns yep she's got basically three hermelins per side and her secondary armament is no joke and they do have pretty decent range as well five kilometers and they all fire he so her secondary guns really good and then, of course, unique to her, she has torpedoes, the same ones the Shrine Horse has. Two of these triple 533mm launchers, they go 64 knots, and they are a good last-ditch weapon. So you're looking at the ship overall, and you're like, wow, so she's got pretty solid guns, she's got torpedoes, she's got good secondaries. And then you look at her AA, and you're like, oh, wow, she's actually got pretty darn good AA as well. Her long-range AA is, again, really, really, really good. So... Pretty much everything about her is solid. Then you take a look at her maneuverability, and there is sort of the first little hiccup. While her speed is amazing at 32 knots, her turning circle radius of 830 meters is a little bit on the no, large side. But, but she is very, very, very fast. And you have to use speed coupled with her turning radius, which isn't great, um, but her rudder shift is okay. 14.7 if you throw on a rudder shift module. Her shield turn pretty well. If you combine the speed and the rudder shift and everything, you should still have a reasonable time at dodging torpedoes. Finally, let's talk about her concealment and at 15.7 surface detectability, Nizanel is the stealthiest of the tier 7 battleships. And so she pretty much, to me, has very, very, very few flaws. Um, in fact, I mean, the only thing might be, oh yes, she doesn't output as many shells as I guess some people would like, but overall I found her to be a very, very good performing tier 7 battleship that will pretty quickly, I think, take the top of all the tier 7 battleships and the statistics and standings and so on and so forth. One other thing to think about as well is Nizanel plus Sharnhurst combination. That will be a pretty scary sight to behold. Next up, we move on to Tier 8 and the Turpitz's sister ship, the Bismarck. And the Bismarck is, well, if you've had a Turpitz, you basically have a ship that is very, very similar. In terms of HP, she has 100 less HP than the Turpitz, which is basically the same. She has the same trollish armor, she's got the same torpedo protection, She's got the same guns, the same dispersion, the same damage, the same numbers of secondary guns. But here's where things start to differ. Same number of secondary guns, yes, but range being completely different. The Bismarck secondary guns go out to 7 kilometers stock. No modules, no captain skills. So the first thing that you might come to mind here is... Ooh, secondary build. The Bismarck does, of course, unlike the Turpets, have no torpedoes. So she, I guess she traded away her torpedoes for these longer range secondary guns. But these secondary guns definitely make it viable for you to go secondary build with the Bismarck. Now, I do have to say, I did not have, on the press account, I did not have a 15 point captain. So I was unable to test a secondary build. So that will, of course, uh, prevent me from giving an opinion on how good that might be. Still, you know, if you throw on all the skills and you get all the modules for secondaries, I mean, you're talking about secondaries that will range out to basically where your motto secondaries will range out to. And the Bismarck being a very, very good brawling ship with the way her armor and everything is, 
I mean, a secondary build should be very, very good and very viable. Bismarck also has pretty darn good AA. Again, majority of the AA damage being concentrated in the longer ranged uh, guns. So Bismarck actually good AA, slightly worse than the North Carolina, but come on, it's a German battleship. And this one, if you're in a carrier, you might want to be a little bit wary of. The Bismarck is also 0.5 knots faster than the Sherpitz. She goes 31 knots. Her turning circle radius of 850 meters is all right. Rudder shift time of 16 seconds is also quite decent, at least for a battleship at this tier. Surface detectability, 16.4 kilometers, is okay. One thing that's special as well about the Bismarck is, under consumables, the Bismarck has sonar. And this is going to allow you to spot those pesky torpedoes or destroyers in smoke for, well, almost two whole minutes. So quite a useful thing to have handy on a battleship. So everything up to here, and mind you, the Bismarck is, if you like the Turpets and you want a Turpets with a slightly different playstyle, I think you'll like the Bismarck too. Would I say the Bismarck is the best tier 8 battleship? Ooh, no. I mean, the tier 8 battleships are all pretty darn good. I would say she is competitive though, much like the way the Turpets is. So with the Germans, you've had a pretty good tier 5, 6, 7, 8, and then you go to 9 and 10 right now, and here's where I have to throw out a caution. I strongly believe that the tier 9 and 10 are likely to get changed. Now the changes might take a little bit longer. My guess is that I don't think Wargaming really expects anybody to get tier 10 on the first day unless you want to blow through almost a million free XP. So I think they might just have a few more little while to test them, maybe more, get some more statistics, and then buff them and change them. I don't know. I think, and the reason why I think this is because the Tier 9, the Tier 10, really do need some help. These two ships are not very good. Let's start with the Tier 9, which is the Friedrich de Gross. This is the Tier 9, which is, I mean, this is basically an H39 design. Um, and... Well, in terms of HP, she does okay at 84,000, and her armor is okay up close. I mean, these ships all have turtleback armor. Um, well, the biggest problem is the torpedo defense. 25% torpedo defense is atrocious. And to make matters worse, she is huge. The Friedrich de Gross is freaking huge. I mean, this thing invites destroyers to pound torpedoes into her it's it if you're a destroyer and you see a ship this big you are tempted to fire torpedoes at the ship there is no helping it and with that really pathetic torpedo defense uh the friedrich the gross she's not a good ship in that sense in terms of survivability her main guns okay she's got two options she's got a 406 millimeter set that fires every 28 seconds and she's got a 420 millimeter set that fires every 32 seconds. So in terms of her guns, they're okay, I think is the best way to put them. Personally, I like the 420 millimeter set, even if they reload a bit slower. I feel like they do hurt a bit more when they hit, as there is a pretty sizable uh, damage increase from the 406 to 420. The guns, do, in terms of the traverse speed, is actually pretty fast, although dispersion at 20.3 kilometers is not that good. And unlike ships like the Koenig, which actually behaved reasonably well, or the Gneisenau, the Friedrich the Gross's guns didn't really seem to behave all that well. Her secondary armament is okay, and I guess you could build her as a secondary uh, battleship, but... She's huge. I mean, trying to close in with something this big is not exactly the smartest thing in the world. Her AA defense is all right. I mean, she does have reasonable AA. My guess is that in their current form, the tier 9 10 German battleships are mostly going to be good as fleet escort battleships. You sort of hang with your fleet and try to provide them with like a and maybe sonar because you do have sonar it's just that these ships are not very good speed wise they are reasonably fast at 30 knots turning circle radius though this is where things start to get painful 940 meters the ship takes a good amount of space shall we say to turn and a rudder shift of 17.3 is at best oh 
k. Surface accessibility, 17.3 kilometers is, well, it's not terrible. You, you could always be the Azumo, which is way easier to spot. But, I mean, look at the size of your ship, right? I mean, you're not, and mind you, because you only have dual turrets, going bow in is not very effective for the Friedrich the Gross compared to, say, the Iowa or the Azumo. So you are likely to have to go broadside, which means that being as big as you are, HE shells really wouldn't have too much problem finding their way onto your ship and setting you ablaze. So tier 9 is uh, just kind of a not so good ship. What about the tier 10? And the tier 10 is, well, this is 100% fantasy land as we have, um, well, we have what the Germans might have been an attempt at a Montana but then they really couldn't make it the size of the Montana so they decided to make a floating island with guns and that's what the Grosse Kurfürst is. This ship is, um, well let's, let's, let's just look at her. In terms of her HP, she's got the lowest HP for a ship this size so that's the first problem and I know that they're gonna buff that so that is something that you know will get changed I hope. Uh, her armor is not very good. Uh, yes, she has the turtle back, but this ship, her armor is very, very kind of meh. And I've even managed to get citadels on the ship with Montana, and that's actually like through the deck and stuff. The ship is just, the armor is, you'll take random hits from random places and you'll get citadel. And of course, remember, she is huge. So enemy ships have far less trouble hitting you than, say, hitting something else, which is smaller, like the Yamato. Um, you can go bow in with the ship, you can, but yeah, look at that, look at the width of that ship, she is so wide, you're definitely going to be eating shells. Again, she does have access to 406 or the 420 millimeter guns. Um, personally, my preference will be to off for the 420, again, like I mentioned earlier, they do hit a bit harder and any bit of damage bonus sort of helps. She does have a good amount of secondary guns with pretty good range. So again, if you want to offer secondary build, you can, but oh, I just don't know. I, I don't really see the Grosso first really going into close range and using her secondaries much. This just doesn't really seem to be her kind of role. Did I also mention that her torpedo protection of 25% makes it a very, very, very inviting target for destroyers, especially when your ship also turns like an aircraft carrier right yeah let me get to that too um before i get to that though let's talk about the guns and the range as well her firing range 20.6 kilometers compared to montana and yamato which both outrange her that's going to be painful as well anyways going back to the maneuverability issue she is fast she goes 30 knots but god she turns in a thousand and fifty meters this thing turns like an aircraft carrier so have fun dodging torpedoes. I mean, you could see torpedoes from five kilometers away. You could turn. Um, you might dodge most of them, but you'll still eat a torpedo here and there. Because just look at the ship. She's so darn wide. Like, you know, trying to torpedo beats this thing. Just no. Like, you're not going to get torpedoes sliding down the side of your your hull and missing you. Like, you're, you're going to take torpedoes. She's just, yeah. Torpedo magnet, 100%. Rudder shift time, 19.4 seconds stock, eh, not very good. Detectability by sea, 18.2 kilometers, well yeah, you go figure, I mean, she's a huge ship, she is going to get detected. The good things about the Grosser Curve first, at least at the current state. Um, now I mentioned her secondaries are good, and the other thing that she's actually got going for her, her AA. Yeah, surprise, surprise, this German battleship, actually some pretty deadly AA. Take a look at that. She's got a bunch of these 128 millimeter guns giving good AA damage out to 5.2 kilometers stock, which of course, if you buff with captain skills and AA modules, the Gross Kurfürst can actually, um, well, have her AA range out to the same range as a Des Moines. So yes, your AA is likely to do quite well. Uh, you also have these 55 millimeter guns and they also go out quite a good distance. So if you build this ship for full AA, I mean, you could again play that fleet escort role. I guess you really have other ships in front of you screening for torpedoes. I mean, that's really the only way I've thought about how she would play so far. But, but I do expect, I really do expect the tier 9 and tier 10 
changes will likely come to these ships as in their current form i just don't see these ships being competitive which is a shame considering a lot of the other german ships are either very very competitive or i would even argue top of their class and so that pretty much sums up all the german battleships um and i hope you've gotten a pretty good feel of how these ships are likely to do um, in battle. If you have any questions, of course, do make sure you leave those in the comment section below, and I'll try my best to answer them to the best of my abilities. So from all that, folks, I hope you enjoyed this German battleship tech tree overview. Uh, take care, have a good day, and I'll talk to all of you again soon.